Hey, y'all, I'm Paula Dean. Now, y'all hold on to your sweet tooth, grab your candy jar, and forget about counting those carbs, because today we're sweetening the pot with some of my confectionery creations. Now, that's just a fancy way of saying we're making candy today, y'all. But before we get started, we got to run down to the Primary Art Supply. It's a neat little shop here in Savannah, and we can pick up some craft materials to wrap up all our paint-sized pleasures. Then we're going to head back to my kitchen, where I'm going to be rolling out my chocolate almond coconut balls that are melt-in-your-mouth delicious. Now, candy is dandy, but if you really want to tempt my sweet tooth, it's got to be chocolate. So it's my old-timey chocolate fudge that's next. And if that's not enough to keep you sticking around, then my pecan praline morsels are sure to win you over. And last, but certainly not least, it's my butternut fingers that are a twist on an old traditional treat. So y'all don't go away and miss all the fun, because we're dining on dessert all day at my house. Time it is, boys and girls. It's candy time. And whether it's Valentine's, 4th of July, Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas, not only is it fun to eat and make these, it's fun to dress them up. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Y'all come along with me because it's candy time. You know, we're very lucky here in Savannah because we're the home of SCAD, Savannah College of Art and Design, so we have some great art supply stores. Well, right now I'm in Primary Art Supply, and they have some neat things. Look, this looks like a little pie server. Why would an artist need that? And look at this, the perfect mayonnaise spreader. So I'm just kind of enjoying browsing. In fact, on this one little rack, you've got your gift bags. So everything you need is right here, except for the gift. And I'm gonna take care of that one. These will be great to wrap our candies in. Oh my goodness. Hot lips. adore making candies. I just love it. So I'm going to share the almond coconut balls with you first. Now I've got two boxes of confectionate sugar and I'm going to add one stick of a really softened butter. I'm going to add one can of sweetened condensed milk. Now I'm going to put a teaspoon of almond flavoring, a bag of sweetened flaked coconut, and I'm gonna finish this off with a cup and a half of chopped almonds. <laughs> Your hands, kids, kinda look like the abominable snowman when you pull them out. <laughs> all right, and see how quickly we've gotten that together? It doesn't take long at all. Okay, gotta do a quick wash up. I've got me a cookie sheet ready here. And y'all will notice that these are no cook candies. Now this is the boring part, making balls. So you might want to whistle in for the family. Cause before you know it, you get to talking and chatting and laughing and having a good time and all the balls are done. I'm bored already. I, Cause I got some ready in the refrigerator so there ain't no sense in me doing this, is it? <laughs> All right, here's our chilled balls. Now, I'm gonna take chocolate chips. Now you can use semi-sweet or unsweet. All right, I'm gonna use a half a bar of paraffin wax, and that's wax that you use to like make your jellies and jams with, and this is gonna make the chocolate stick to our candy. So I'm just gonna melt that over some boiling water. It's gonna make our balls real, real shiny and pretty. Way to go, Paula. All right. Now we're gonna take our candy. We're gonna stick a skewer into it. You can use a toothpick, but I found that the skewers are heavier and it just works better. So we're just gonna run them around in there. 
using another stick, I'm going to push that off and just cover that hole. Pretty neat little trick, isn't it? So we're going to do that same thing again. Perfect. All right, I tell y'all something, this has made me so hungry. I've got some in the refrigerator that's already set because you can leave these out on the counter or you can put them in the refrigerator. Well, I want to rush it along, so I put mine in the refrigerator. So why don't we stop and have a little bite of candy? And then I'll come back and do these while we're on break. Look how good these look and they've hardened up. Now these candies are good at any holiday. Look at those chocolates. <laughs> Y'all stick around because when we come back, I'm going to be making old timey fudge like I used to make years ago and pecan praline more. All right, I'm gathering up the last of the things that I'm going to need to make two of my candies that I love so very much. But let's get started with our old timey fudge right now. And I'm gonna put three cups of sugar and a cup of evaporated milk. I'm gonna put that on this side. And then over here, I'm gonna put our cocoa. And we're just gonna incorporate that real good until our sugar has dissolved and our cocoa is well blended in there. All right, now I'm gonna stir in about three tablespoons of a white corn syrup. And this is gonna make our candy just come all together. Like I said, you just wanna make sure you have a good thermometer that you can read. Some of them today, they're hard to read. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and clip this onto our pot. Yeah, we're just uh, 150 degrees right now. So we're gonna just let that cook over kind of, kind of medium heat. So we'll wanna keep a close eye on our thermometer. All right, now over here, we're gonna move on to our pecan praline morsels. I've got my two cups of pecans here and I've got a half a cup of light brown sugar and a half a cup of heavy cream. The brown sugar and the heavy cream are going to give it kind of a praline coating on these pecans, and they're just going to be so good. Now, we're going to put these on our pan. We're going to put them in a 350 preheated oven, and we're going to let them bake for about 20 minutes. After about 10 minutes, I'm going to go to the oven and stir them because you have to be very, very careful with nuts because if they burn, which they will burn easily. There's just nothing you can do to get that burn taste out of them. All right, so we're gonna give our pan a squirt. All right, we're gonna dump these onto our cookie sheet. All right, so let's get these in the oven because I've got to give my attention back to that fudge. All right. 10 minutes, we'll give those a quick little turn to just make sure they're not burning. It's right there, y'all, around 234, 235. If this thermometer is reading properly. All right, I'm gonna take that out and I'm gonna add six tablespoons of butter. May have been seven tablespoons I added. I can't tell. All right, we're gonna add about a teaspoon and a half of vanilla flavoring and a cup of chopped nuts, or about a cup and a half. I like to add the pecan to it, but you can do walnuts, macadamia nuts. All right, we've got our dish nice and buttered. Now we're just gonna stir this. I think to save some wear and tear on my arm, I think I'm gonna do this with an electric mixer. Just a little hand mixer. 
We're gonna beat it until it's not quite so shiny. We wanna work quickly from this point. And it looks very good, y'all. Let's get this into our butter dish before it gets too hard. Let it cool for a few minutes, and then I'm gonna score it and cut it. But I think we have created a wonderful pan of old-timey fudge. I gotta run over here and check on these pecans because I know it's been 10 minutes and we need to turn them and toss them around. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, those look pretty good. Just gonna give them a quick toss. All right, now we're gonna stick those in for about 10 more minutes. Now when we come back, I'm gonna be making buttery nut fingers. So y'all don't go anywhere, cause we got some more good sweet things coming up. See you in a couple. I want to get my spoon out because I know I'm going to need it in a minute. But in the meantime, we've got to check on our pecans. All right. Those look delicious, don't they? All right, and let's, ooh, it's hot. Let's get them up and get them in our bowl because we don't want to keep these on that hot cookie sheet because they will continue to cook. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened to all my little spatulas, but this one's working out good. In fact, I'm really starting to get attached to it. Perfect. All right, now I'm going to move this because we're fixing to move on to an old standard of cookie. Now, this particular recipe that I used was my grandmother Paul's and grandma made hers in balls. Well, and sometimes I do them that way too, but over the years I just started making them in fingers. But in the meantime, I've got two and a half cups of plain flour or all-purpose flour, three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar, and we're just gonna mix those two ingredients together. This cookie is very, very easy, but it does take a while because they have to bake for about 20 or 25 minutes, which is what, about 15 minutes longer than a normal cookie? Whoops. <laughs> Pillsbury dough girl. All right, now I'm gonna start this off by using a wooden spoon to just kind of cut that butter in there a little. All right, now I'm gonna put in some vanilla flavoring. And if you wanted to kind of shake your flavoring up, you could do, gosh, just about any kind of flavoring you want to. Orange flavoring would be nice. Almond would be delicious in there. All right, now I'm gonna add our chopped pecans. And you can see how quickly me getting my hands in here is coming together. I still think that some of my best utensils are the ones that God gave me. These two hands right here, they make great spoons and mixers. So like I said, my grandmother Paul used to roll these into balls, but I'm gonna roll mine into fingers. And I just remembered our oven is on 350 from our pecans, so I'm gonna reach over here and turn that to 325. And if my hands are not too greasy, I'm just gonna fan it to cool it down for a minute because we're ready to put these in the oven. All right, so here we go. Into the oven. Okay, so we got those in the oven, but I've got dough all over my hands, so I'm gonna give a quick rinse. I love raw cookie dough, but I don't wanna mix it in with my fudge, so I do wanna get rid of that. All right. Now I think this is probably my favorite time right now. I get to cut into my fudge. And let's see how it's 
does. Oh, and look, y'all. <laughs> look down here at my side. She's enjoying this unusually cool but wonderful day we're having. It's made all the dogs sleepy, including this dog. <laughs> I could take a nap, too. Look at this wonderful fudge. Oh, my goodness, this brings back so many memories. Oh, it could not be any more perfect. It is just hard to beat the old-timey cooked fudge. Mmm. Just can't hardly wait. Not that this fudge needs it, not at all, but I just want to garnish the plate a little bit. So I'm just gonna dust it with a little cocoa. And just to make sure I do have enough nuts on it, I'm just gonna sprinkle it with a few extra because I can always take my piece of fudge and dunk in there like that and get me a few more nuts. Mmm. This is so good, it's kinda got me dewy-eyed. Oh. I'm lost in it, but if I don't work my way out of this, we're gonna have bud burned, if I can say it, we're gonna have burned buttery fingers. So let's go over here and check. You can see how they swelled up a little. Those are perfect, just barely a light brown. Let's see if I can. All right, now we're just gonna toss these in our powdered sugar while they're warm. And look, it's sticking so nicely. And I've got me a plate. And when we come back, I'm gonna show you some tips on how to wrap all these wonderful little goodies up. I want to share a few tips with y'all on packaging your candy now that we've got it all made. You can take tissue papers and it's very, very pretty to take two different kinds of tissue paper and offset one of them. Pile your candy in the center as much as you want to give and then pull up the corners like so and tie them up with a pretty ribbon. And you've got a perfect container. And you can also buy little colored sacks. You can get your corresponding colors and write a message on them, just like this. And our pecans will go nicely in these sacks. Because it kind of looks like a little peanut sack anyway. And we'll just tie those up with a pretty ribbon. You can use Halloween colors. And look how cute that is. A great little handout for the children at Halloween. So if you don't have time to make your candy, don't fret over it, don't feel guilty, don't feel bad. You can go to the grocery store or the candy store and find all kind of beautiful candy in all different colors and you can package them in a clear bag and put the ribbon that matches the occasion on them. It's gonna make your candy giving so easy. Boys and girls, moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, aunts and uncles, Whatever you're making of these dishes, the butternut fingers, the chocolate almond coconut balls, the pecan praline morsels, or old timey, old fashioned fudge. Whether you wanna pass these out at holiday time or you just wanna have them around your house for your family and friends when they drop in, you're gonna find that they're all easy, 
delicious recipes. So until next time, America, I want to send y'all best dishes from my sweet tooth to yours.